What do you know about this new comedy? Or are you just right, I'm gonna stop you right there because I'm not loving the whole vibe of this interaction so far. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 5 facts about Netflix, the incredible Jessica James. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at some interesting and little-known facts about this 2017 Netflix film. I'm pretty, I'm smart. I am a Coco Queen. Are those for the guests? Yes. Alright. Number 5. The movie premiered at Sundance. Netflix has become known in the early 21st century for creating incredible originals like House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, and Stranger Things, but they're still in the business of acquiring existing properties. The Incredible Jessica James was actually produced by Beachside Films, but just days before it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in January of 2017, Netflix bought the rights to distribute it. As of early August 2017, the film was sitting at 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it seems like the streaming giant made the right call. Number 4. It features a mix of familiar faces and newcomers. While the film's focus is spent primarily on the titular character, portrayed by Jessica Williams, the supporting cast is important in creating the overall tone. Williams may be recognizable from her minor roles in TV and movies, but she's mainly familiar to audiences because of her position as a former correspondent on The Daily Show. You have to change into your alter ego? Who are you, Lady Gaga? Other faces you may notice are Noelle Wells, who plays Dev's love interest in Netflix Master of None, in the role of Jessica's best friend. You remembered my name. Uh, yeah, I remembered your name. And Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta, acting as Jessica's ex. Uh, you know what, I, th I think if we spent the time we spent thinking about not spending money, spent that time on spending money, then it'd be time well spent. Number 3. Jim Strauss wrote the movie for Jessica Williams. Jim Strauss is a screenwriter and director who has created a number of indie films in the early 2000s, including Lonesome Jim, starring Casey Affleck and directed by Steve Buscemi, Grace is Gone, starring John Cusack, and 2015's People, Places, Things. Everything is going to be okay. How do you know? I don't, but it just helps sometimes to say that. While working on that film, Strauss had the chance to work with Jessica Williams and during the editing stage, said that he couldn't wait until she starred in her own movie. Rather than let someone else cast her in a major role first, Strauss hurried the process along by penning the screenplay for Jessica James, with Williams in mind for the lead part. Number 2. The film is inspired by real life Considering the final product feels like a showcase for Williams' work, it should come as no surprise that she had a hand in the direction the story would take and drew inspiration from events in her real life. I thought this would be good for me to help me get over this guy I thought I was in love with, but this whole thing is making me think of him more intensely. Cool. Strauss and Williams worked closely together during the writing phase, and Williams is also an executive producer for the project, in addition to having a starring role. The film's character is an aspiring playwright, who pays the bills by teaching acting to children. And while Williams hasn't focused on writing for theater off-screen, the themes are undoubtedly similar. I'm 25 and I'm sort of in this weird transitional phase. Number 1. Who is Jessica Williams? Jessica Williams might still be an up-and-coming star. Her career has actually been long and varied. Williams kicked off her acting work on a short-lived Nickelodeon show called Just For Kicks, in which she played a young New York soccer player. I saw the Power Circus play Hartford last year. You guys were awesome. Thanks. She went on to act in several minor roles, including a stint on HBO's Girls, but her big break came when she was hired as the first black female correspondent for The Daily Show in 2012. Brace yourself, you might want to sit down for this, but Beyonce is black. While she left that job after four years, she has gone on to host the hugely popular podcast Two Dope Queens. We look forward to seeing more of Williams soon. All right, so we're done here? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.